You seem to be an internet user if you are watching this video. And hence, even if you don't care what the term HTTP means, you are using it without knowing it. I'm Alex Sergienke, and today we are going to talk about HTTP. HTTP or Hypertext Transfer Protocol is an application layer protocol for distributed, collaborative Harper Media Information Systems. That's how Wikipedia describes HTTP. This definition appears a little blurry to me as an ordinary person, so I've made a decision to learn more about the subject and share some insights about HTTP with you. I guess you've opened YouTube.com a few minutes, hours or even days ago and have waited while the main page loading. This page is an object that consists of images, text, animations and other elements. All these elements are stored on a server or, in other words, a remote machine. When these elements are received by your browser, it renders them in a specific way that in the end shapes the object into a good-looking web page. HTTP is the basis that ensures data exchange on the Internet. It's HTTP which provides the opportunity to obtain all the resources that make up the web page from a server. HTTP is a client-server protocol and, in our case, your browser acts as the client that initiates requests to YouTube. Clients and servers usually speak by means of single messages in a request-response manner. A browser or client sends a request to the server and waits for a response, simplified a web page. HTTP was introduced in the early 90s as an extensible and adaptable protocol, and it is still in use today. As an application protocol, it is dependent on lower-level transport protocols such as TCP or Transmission Control Protocol. To become familiar with all of the network layers, look up the OSI model on the Internet. Tim Berners-Lee initiated HTTP at CERN in 1989 and the first version HTTP 0.9 was released in 1992. What exactly is hypertext? It is a piece of text that contains references to other pieces of text or elements that the reader can access. Have you ever read a book in which the reader gets to choose which plot branch to follow? This is an instance of hypertext. Another example of hypertext is well-known HTML. The concept of hypertext was proposed in 1967 by an American philosopher named Theodore Nelson. We now understand that every element on the web can be considered a resource. How do I locate a specific resource? To locate the required resource we need its specific address. The URI or Uniform Resource Identifier is used here. A URI is a symbolic stream that identifies an abstract or a physical resource such as a document, image or service. The resource is not necessarily accessible via the Internet. URI can be either URL or URN, or it can be a combination of the two. URL stands for Uniform Resource Locator and aids in the discovery of a specific resource. URN stands for Uniform Resource Name and aids in resource identification. 
a URL is a URI that, in addition to identifying the resource, provides information about its location. While a URN is a URI that only identifies a resource in a specific namespace, but doesn't provide any information about its location. Let us now apply the example to a real-world scenario. Assume I ask you to give me a black iPhone 12 with 128GB of storage. You are aware of the exact model I desired, as well as its manufacturer, memory size and even color. This is an example of URN, because you know the model but have no idea where to buy this phone. Of course you do, but that's just an example. But if I told you to bring me the black iPhone 12 with the same features from the Apple Store across the street, you'd know exactly where the phone is. This is a URL example. Let's see what URI looks like. Since we are all YouTube users, the following link to a video might be a perfect example. This URL uniquely identifies a resource, in our case, a video. The protocol type in this case is HTTPS, and the S denotes a secured connection. The domain and domain suffix are YouTube.p. It directs the user to the server hosting the resource. The letter symbols create the video's distinctive identification. Together, these building parts make up the entire URL. An HTTP request consists of the following blocks. A request line to reach the required resource, for example, a unique video identifier from the previous example, and the method type get, post, put, etc. A set of headers which can provide an extra information about the request, for example a security token, encoding parameters, host and others. And an optional message body. A simple response from a server contains the following segments. HTTP status code, for example, HTTP 404 not found, a set of headers, and a message body. Let's take an example that we need to open a main.html page from the site test.com. Below is how the request from the browser should look like to get the desired main.html resource. And the response from the web server should look like this. The HTTP status codes are developed as per the Internet standards defined by Internet Engineering Task Force or IETF for short. They are classified into five different categories. The first series is informational message. The second series stands for success message. Third series is redirection message. Fourth is for error messages related to client. And the fifth is error messages related to server. HTTP 1.1 defines the set of methods to express client intentions. These method names are case-sensitive and they must be used in uppercase. The first is GET and it's used to retrieve information from a given server using URI. GET requests should only retrieve data without any modifications or side effects on the data at the server side. 
head is the same as get but returns only the status line and the header section in the response so it doesn't have a body this method is used under heavy loads for capacity optimizations post method is used to send data to the server the body type should be specified in the content type header the put method creates a new resource or replaces the resource with the data given in the request. Unlike post, put is a damp attend and has no side ethics in case of multiple consecutive requests. Delete method removes all current representations of the target resource with the given URI. The connect method establishes a two-way connection with the requested resource. It can be used to open a tunnel. The options method requests available communication options for a given URI. The trace method performs a message loopback test along the path to the requested resource and acts as a debugging mechanism. And the last method is patch. It is a kind of update that applies a partial modifications to the requested resource. Let's wrap up. HTTP is a fundamental internet protocol for interaction between clients and servers. In most cases, web browser acts as a client that requests resources from a server. Each resource has its own unique URI that identifies each type and location. HTTP uses status course to identify results and also use different methods to express client intentions. Thank you for watching. Have a great day. Bye.